Hello, this is Megan Ryan here, and this is my field exam part one for my master beekeeping certification. And I just wanted to introduce myself before I suit completely up and we dig into the hive. Um, so today I'm gonna to be doing a hive inspection. We are here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Uh, it's 82 degrees today, it's beautiful, it's sunny. Um, and we're gonna get into uh, this hive here uh, that is a recent swarm hive. Um, so before we do that, we're gonna check out a few things. I'm gonna talk to you about a few details regarding this hive and some best practice managements. Um, but I am the education director for Southwest Honey Company and the co-founder um, with my partner. And we focus a lot on pollinator education and that is kind of how we dug into the beekeeping world. Um, so uh, this apiary location um, is kind of like a nursery apiary. We have some hives that we keep here that we like to keep a close eye on. Um, maybe they're a recent split or a recent swarm and maybe they need a little more attention um, and we wait for them to get a little more established before we move them to their permanent apiary. Um, so in terms of this apiary for today, I'm very happy with this location. Um, we have great wind block here um, from the grasses behind. Uh, we also are south facing, um, actually a little bit southeast, so that is perfect. We are very close to a wetlands as well as a conservation club. There's plenty of water sources, plenty of flower and foliage. Um, so this apiary uh, is uh, wonderful, especially for these newer hives that are getting started. And you'll also notice that our hive is painted. We have a really neat project um, with um, some local artists that we partner with um, to do some awareness of pollinator education through the local art community. Um, and this is perfect in our apiaries to help the bees identify their hive from the neighboring hives so we don't have a bunch of white boxes all lined up. Um, it is raised up off of the ground. Um, and we do use um, screened bottom boards. Um, and you'll notice right now, our entrance uh, reducer is set to the smallest setting um, in hopes of helping them uh, not have to focus on protecting a huge hive en entrance and kind of emulating that natural in the wild entrance where it would be a small hole. Um, so, um, when this goes to its permanent apiary, the um, pros and cons of that apiary, because I don't really have a lot of negatives that I feel about this apiary, but it's permanent apiary. The only con that I can identify is a little bit too much shade. Um, so sometimes we worry that maybe the, the shade that's provided by the huge tree line where this will end up eventually um, does cause some issues. Um, but other than that, the permanent apiary with it, where this will go in the end is also wonderful water source. Uh, it's on an organic certified farm, um, plenty of foliage, no pesticide use um, within, you know, a three mile radius-ish. Um, so pretty happy with that. Um, so this year and through the coursework, through the Master Beekeeping Certification, um, we talked a lot about integrated pest management and especially in regards to varroa treatment. Um, and I, I loved learning more aspects and ideas and approaches to that. So um, in terms of integrated pest management, something that we already have been doing and continue to do is the use of diatomaceous earth um, below our hives uh, that does cut down on a lot of pests and the small hive beetles. Um, one thing that I did learn about in the course that I would love to implement next season is the um, use of the drone comb um, removal frame to remove the drone comb frames um, to help with varroa levels. Um, so I would love to incorporate that along with our treatment. Um, we do tend to use an alcohol wash to monitor our mite levels. And then um, this year we did try out the mite away quick strips, um, which absolutely have loved so far. Um, they seem to be very effective. The efficacy levels are very high. Um, they're very easy to implement um, and actually install into the hive. Uh, so we've had a lot of luck with that, but that'll be the first year um, that we've tried those. So I'm, I'm having a good first experience. So we'll kind of evaluate at the end of the season. 
Um, and then we also implement oxalic acid, uh, usually later in the season once our supers are removed. Um, uh, and that's a nice one because you can use it all year round and you don't have to open the hive. Um, we do have a really neat system. We use the vapor method. So um, instead of just inserting the heated wand um, with our oxalic for the vaporization, we built this handy metal tray that is the perfect size to slide underneath our screen bottom boards. Um, and we welded the, um, the plate, the heating plate right onto that. Uh, so we can close up our hive with our screen bottom board completely while treating at the same time, um, not disturbing the bees at all. Um, and it's kind of a neat little homemade method that uh, makes using screen bottom boards and the vaporization oxalic method um, kind of work together so that you don't have to close up your hive and insert the wand. It's all one step, one little piece that we created. Um, and we have good success with that, um, but the efficacy levels were not as high as we'd like, so I'm really excited about switching to the Mite Away Quick Strips this season. Um, and um, yeah, we kind of, uh, this hive here um, is a, a late swarm. They swarmed very late in the season because um, today is uh, July 22nd, I believe and uh, they swarmed late. Um, so we're gonna inspect this hive here um, and see how they're doing after we rescued this swarm. We get a lot of local calls in the city here to come rescue swarms from area residents. Um, so uh, before we get in, um, we're gonna look at the outside of this hive um, and kind of just inspect some things. Um, there are not a lot of guard bees um, at all. So I would assume, you know, that has to do with probably their population is not quite as high as it needs to be yet. Um, I do not see um, fecal matter. Um, I also, um, looking at the ground, I do not see crawling or what looks to be dying bees. So those are all good signs. Um, the bees are kind of just doing their thing. I've got this one little lady checking me out here, but um, they seem to be fairly happy coming and going. Um, I was watching earlier today. I did see some pollen coming in. Um, so we're going to get in there and check them out. Um, and what I expect to see inside um, is hopefully brood. Um, we've given them enough time that um, the queen should have started laying, so I'm hoping to see all stages of brood um, if, if things go well. Um, I'm hoping to see uh, honey, or uh, nectar, and pollen stores. Um, I did bring with me today a pollen patty um, that I can um, supplement if I don't see enough pollen stores. We want to make sure that they have uh, great pollen levels so that they can produce enough royal jelly, raise their young, increase their population. Um, so we'll kind of check that out and see what they might need. Um, so before I get in the hive, um, I do have my smoker started. Um, we don't tend to use the smoker super often um, unless needed when the hives are super large in the summers. Um, this hive is pretty small and seems pretty tame. I will go ahead and demonstrate how to appropriately smoke um, this hive before we get into it. Um, but just knowing that an excessive amount of smoke is not needed um, and that is a best practice in general. Um, so I'm going to grab the smoker really quick and um, we're just going to kind of give this a little bit of smoke just to kind of let them know we're coming in here and then I will smoke a little bit underneath the lid once I open up. So I'm going to go ahead and suit all the way up. And you'll notice as I'm opening the hive here in a moment, um, the uh, speed at which I open the hive is going to be slow and very intentional. Um, I don't want to bang around 
or do any loud, large movements, keeping things calm and quiet and gentle so as not to harm any bees, if at all possible. And uh, we'll go from there. So let me see, I don't have a lot of propolis yet. Get them a little bit of smoke up here. All right, so we are going to go ahead and pop our inner cover off. And that inner cover is a great way to create ventilation within your hive. Oh, great. All right. Well, they definitely are here and working and active. So hopefully we will find some good things inside these frames. Um, typically, a, a colony would not want to be over inspected. You don't want to bother the bees more than you need to. Um, we shoot for about every four weeks. Um, because this is a swarm, um, obviously I'm getting into this box sooner than that uh, to check things out and I will come back sooner than four weeks after this inspection um, to follow up. Um, and then once we get them placed in their permanent apiary, we will kind of allow them to do their thing and hopefully we won't need to check on them as often. Um, so we're going to just slowly take out this frame so as not to harm any bees. Let's see how they're doing. And we're going to be very intentional because as most beekeepers will learn very quickly, the queen could be anywhere. So we want to make sure that we keep this over the box and definitely pay attention for where she might be. Excellent, I'm seeing great nectar storage here. Okay, so I don't know if we can see that here. Let me turn this way. I'm seeing lots of fresh nectar storage in these. This comb here, which is great. This is towards the outer edge of the box, which is where we would wanna see them starting to put their stores. See lots of workers. I'm not noticing any drones yet. I do not see the queen on this frame. I see some nurse bees, so that is awesome. That means they've got some brood that's recently hatched. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside. I like to try not to leave out or get out more than one frame at a time. Um, so I'm going to see if I can find where their brood nest is. See how the queen is doing. And I do know there is a honey flow right now. Uh, not as large as earlier in the summer, but we do have a lot of stuff blooming right now. And the fact that we just saw nectar coming in is awesome. Um, so... Since this was a late swarm in the season, um, I did um, one of the far frames on the end of this box, I did supplement with a honey frame that I was able to um, supply them from another hive that we had kept in the freezer that we like to keep on hand for when we rescue swarms to help them with um, uh, to help them with uh, just getting started and making sure they have um, some food to begin with. Um, as we know, um, bees need not only nectar for their carbs and their energy and honey, they need pollen for their protein and amino acids. Said I did bring a pollen patty with me in case we're not seeing a ton of pollen for these guys just to help them out as they establish. Oh wonderful! 
Look at that. I see larva, I see eggs, I see capped brood. Fantastic. All right, so we're gonna make sure the queen is not on this frame. And then we'll see if we can get a good shot in the sunlight here of our eggs. All right, nothing going on on the other side. So she's not there. Let me give this one more glance. I wanna be sure the queen is not on here before I hold this up. I can which way let's go this way this is always the fun game of trying to line this up we'll see if we can get you a shot here of the eggs that we're seeing in here definitely capped brood definitely larva definitely eggs awesome okay looks like we were able to get the eggs in the shot so you all can see those. These guys are doing great. That means we have a queen right hive. Her um, laying pattern seems decent. And um, I'll show you a few other things here after we get a little footage of the our three stages of brood here. These guys look generally healthy. And you'll notice up in the corners here, we do have nectar, some food storage for feeding the larva. So that's awesome. And I'm noticing down here, I do have some pollen storage. I don't know if you could zoom in on that for me. Um, there is pollen down here and some nectar um, up in the corners as well. I'm, like, I'm trying to look at um, royal jelly levels. Uh, they look they look decent here. Looks like the larvae have a nice amount of royal jelly around them. There's not quite as much pollen on this frame as I would like to see, so we'll keep looking here and see what the other frames look like. based on this the population of the hive is not as large as I want it right now but keeping in mind they are just getting started so we definitely want to see a population increase oh awesome all stages of life on this frame as well I'm seeing nectar a little bit of pollen again not as much pollen as I would like to see but um, this queen is doing a great job her brood pattern is really solid um, I'm also taking very close care to watch for any signs of disease. Um, I am not seeing any chewed uh, cappings. I haven't seen any deformed wing signs. Um, looking out for things like um, chalk brood or um, American fowl brood. European fowl brood, sack brood, all the, all the possibilities, and I'm not seeing any signs of that. Um, I'm not seeing any chalky, uncapped um, brood. Everybody looks pretty healthy here. Oh, this side is pretty small. They haven't drawn this all out yet. Great. Um, they have definitely filled in every cell they possibly could with eggs. She's done a great job. I haven't seen the queen yet, but she's definitely here. Um, let's see here. Um, I haven't seen any drones yet either, um, but we definitely do have the workers, and I've seen nurse bees, and we saw foragers coming in and out. Um, I haven't noticed any drone bees, but they were here at some point because this queen is definitely lane um, and 
I can't say for sure if the queen from the original swarm was with them when we rescued them. We never actually got to see her. Um, so she's here. We get our, our confirmation now that um, she is here. Great, another frame of brood. A little bit of nectar in the corners. Again, not as much pollen as I would like to see. So that is definitely something we're gonna address during this hive check here. Awesome. Lots of nectar on this frame. <laughs> Apologize the sound of the generator in the background. Um, we had a big summer storm last evening and a lot of people are without power right now. Oh, there's the queen. Look at her, there she is, doing her thing. She looks great. Not super big. Definitely golden. Awesome. Again, looking around at this frame, I'm not seeing any major concerns. There's actually some workers emerging from their cells right now. So we got some nurse bees about to join the colony. Um, not seen lots of nurse bees on this frame. Lots of tiny little fuzzy gals um, who are freshly emerged. Again, not seen any drones. So our little cast system is missing one component so far. We will we will keep looking here. There she is. It's always nice when you um, rescue a swarm and you're not sure about the queen's um, presence or status to get back into a hive a couple weeks later and realize she's here, she's laying, and they're healthy. Really some, definitely seen in all stages again on this frame, larva, eggs, capped brood. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put this back in just so she's not out and disturbed for any longer than needed. Keeping an eye out too for, I haven't seen tons of pests. Maybe I've seen like maybe one hive beetle, um, so that's good too. We'll keep monitoring that and see how those levels go. Actually, I don't think there's much going on on this frame, but it looks like they might be drawing out some brand new comb. They are. Okay, so this hive is rocking and rolling. You'll notice that a lot of this comb um, around the edges here is fresh. Um, there's eggs in them already. So this queen has been busy, busy, busy. Um, looking good though. There's pollen around on this frame. This whole side of the frame here, pocked with pollen, followed by these eggs um, on the rest of the cells, it looks like. So they're doing great. Um, did not see any queen cells or queen cuffs, um, but this hive is definitely queen right. Um, if we had seen any queen cells towards the bottom of the frames, that usually indicates swarming cells. Hopefully we would not have seen those with this hive since they were a recent swarm. But I did not notice any of those, so it looks great. Um, Thankfully, I didn't see any diseases um, or signs of diseases when going through this hive. So I'm going to very slowly get these frames back to the side where they belong so I can put back in the frame I got out at the beginning. And it's very important, you want to try very hard to return frames to the same position they were in 
them from the hive and can continue, you know, continually paying attention to their orientation um, so that when we leave after this hive inspection, the bees don't have to reorient themselves with anything. And I'm moving very slowly because I don't want to squish any bees in between these frames. So with beekeeping, good to move with intentionality and taking your time and going slow. Oh, there is a yellow jacket that I just saw go down in here. We are getting closer towards the end of summer and that will continue to be an issue that we'll monitor with robbing. Um, that tends to get really icky here in Indiana around August. Um, we'll start to see um, more little intruders trying to get into the hive. So I'm going to see if I can shoo him out of here. Alrighty. I'm going to put this frame back in. And then there's a few other things that I want to talk about, but we don't want to leave this hive open any longer than we need to. So I'm going to go ahead and get these guys nicely settled and then talk to you about a few other things. So for this time of year, um, this hive is definitely lacking pollen and nectar storage. Um, like I said, I did not get this frame out, but this frame over here on the end, when we rescued the swarm, um, this is a full frame of honey. So that's a great resource for them, um, just as kind of a backup. But they seem to be doing really great with nectar. They've got nectar on all the brood frames. And then the first frame we got out, um, they're definitely starting to put up fresh nectar. Um, there is a honey flow, lots of things blooming, so that's great. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add my pollen patty piece here. Um, and we're going to be really conscious of coming back in a couple weeks. And if they haven't eaten this, I'll remove it. Um, these are famous for um, housing small hive beetles. Um, so we want to keep that to a minimum if possible. I like to kind of poke some holes in the parchment paper here just to help them so they don't have to chew all the way through. So I think that they really need this pollen based on what we just saw for sure. So we're going to give them this. They have plenty of nectar. Um, everything looks great. Not a lot of disease in the hive. Um, so I think we're good to go with this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give them a little bit of smoke so that I don't smush very many of them. As I put the inner cover back on. We do have a few bees on here, but I'm going to gently use my brush to get those ladies back down in the hive especially since their population is fairly low at this point. You do not want to hurt any bees that you don't need to. So this hive was wonderful. Great temperament. Um, the queen seems to be doing a great job. They are well on their way. They definitely are not ready for their next brood box yet. Um, so we'll talk about that in just a second. Go ahead and get these guys closed back up. Oh, you will notice there is a small hive beetle that just went in the entrance. I don't know if we, you saw that, but I saw that. So we're going to take note of that too and um, pay attention to those going forward. Um, so I do have a few things I want to talk about before I end this video. So I'm going to take my veil off here though so that you can see. Okay, so Overall health of the hive, overall perception, um, they are healthy, low population, kind of low pollen amounts, um, but hopefully we've um, mitigated the pollen and it looks like their population's about to explode um, based on the amount of capped brood we saw and the fact that there's nurse bees, so it seems like their brood cycle has really started taking off. Um, so um, I think that uh, with that help of that pollen, it'll increase their royal jelly levels and allow them to continue growing their population. Um, if we were to find any diseases, 
um, we would definitely follow appropriate measures for that. But like I said, I did not see any signs of um, any issues, starting with, um, as we did at the beginning, just looking at the outside of your hive before you even start an inspection can be really important and give you some really telltale signs um, that there might be something wrong. So now that the hive's closed up, um, one cool thing that I did want to share is um, after I'm done with a hive inspection, I usually move immediately to take notes um, because we all know that um, it's hard to remember from week to week and hive to hive what you've done in each hive. We use a great app um, called um, B Plus and uh, it provides everything that we need. Um, it's a British based created app. Um, it was created by a beekeeping couple um, and it's been wonderful. Um, it uh, has developed over the years uh, to include more and more um, data points. Um, you can import and export uh, your hive check data, um, which is really cool for um, some of the work that we've done uh, in the past um, with different grants and things like that and helping with some research projects where they needed data. Um, so in, in terms of this hive needing immediate management, the only thing was the pollen. We took care of that. Um, we're going to keep a close eye on them. They are here in our nursery apiary. So the plan would be that I'll come back in about two weeks um, and do a follow-up inspection. And at that time, um, I'm going to check their pollen levels. Um, and if their population is large enough and they are working on um, at least 80% of the frames, so eight out of the 10 frames that are in this box, um, then I think we'll decide that um, they'll be ready to move to their permanent apiary and after that move uh, we'll be adding their second brood box. So they're looking great. So in two weeks provided that all of those things are in place and and going well with their population and pollen levels um, we probably will move them, add their second brood box and then um, the hive check immediately after that would be when we would probably do our first alcohol wash and check for mite levels. Um, seeing as uh, their next hive check will probably be in August, um, the, the mite levels might change a little bit based on the season and the region here. Um, so we'll definitely want, by the time we check for mites mid-August, um, we'll definitely want that uh, threshold to be below um, a 3% infestation um, and then uh, and then we'll treat with um, mite away quick strips um, if it requires um, but as with everything uh, we will not treat if, if not needed um, another thing is we'll keep an eye on the small hive beetles um, we use the beetle sheets um, that we'll place in the hive to kind of capture or trap um, some of the beetles um, if we notice that that uh, population of beetles has increased too. Um, so um, I think that's about it. I'm very happy with the quality of this hive. Um, it's always touch and go with swarms, um, especially uh, in the city, in residential areas. Um, you're not sure what's gonna happen and they have proved to be very healthy, very happy and well on their way to being a strong colony going into winter. Um, we, we populate our apiaries with um, mostly, for, actually at this point, all of our hives are 100% um, swarm rescues. Um, and we've noticed that the genetics and the, um, their capability of overwintering has increased greatly since years ago when we started, we tried packaging or package bees and we've noticed a great um, improvement um, now that we're populating all of our apiaries with local swarms um, and we're, we're pretty happy with that so this will just be added to our little family and uh, we'll continue doing what we do but hopefully these guys uh, stay stay in good shape for the next couple weeks and we'll check on them and and hopefully they'll be ready for their permanent move it's always fun when they when they are healthy enough to go permanently to their apiary so I think I have covered everything. Um, this course has been great. This hive check um, was very encouraging and positive. So that's it, folks. Thank you so much.